Right, good morning everyone. Uh, this is Sunday morning. Uh, I'm about to speak about the Sunday morning live episode that I've, ca that I've caught this morning. Uh, there's several topics that were mentioned on the show this morning and I'm quite quite amazed at what I've seen. Uh, I'm very disappointed actually in the B in the BBC. The, I've just got dressed and I've simply chosen my uh, the regiment polo shirt, what my dad served with, uh, free tank transport squadron. I don't know if you can see there on the, the arm there. It's got the red hand of Ulster laid flat with a, a tank. And that's from Operation Motorman. Um, my father served in Northern Ireland along with many other men uh, and women that, that I've known. Some of them have known... Uh, well, they should I say they've known me the vast majority of my life. Some have known me since uh, day one of me being born. Uh, anyway, Sir Richard Dannett was one of the guests on the show, and I fully agree with everything what Sir Richard Dannett says. There was also a member on the show from Justice for Northern Ireland campaign that I've met in London uh, in June I actually went and stood with the Justice for Northern Ireland campaign with my father across from the gates of uh, Downing Street uh, quite similar to what I did for Veterans Against Terrorism on the 5th of August and Stand Up to Terror H hence why I've got my born fearless hat on but anyway on the show, they had various journalists and other guests, and one of the guests was a, an actual Republican guy, a Republican sympathiser. Now, he seems to think it's all right to slander veterans. Many many of these Northern Ireland veterans, many, many have passed away. I'm talking about the veterans from the early days in the late 60s 1969 to 2007 was up banner but we still have we still have troops in northern ireland today not as many as what the perhaps was in the late in the 70s 80s uh early early to mid 90s but uh i just find it disgraceful bbc jumping on the bandwagon having people on the show one of the journalists was it was a, a girl of about my age she's possibly even younger than me now i remember many terrorists attacks as i was growing up as a boy i remember many from the early 80s such as the enniskillen bomb on remembrance day i remember Omer well too I remember many. I remember Canary Wharf in London. Uh, and I know, like, facts, but I don't really want to go into detail. Some of the details to these terrorist attacks are quite harrow harrowing and upsetting. But my point is, this journalist that was on the show this morning, she probably hasn't got a bloody clue. She probably hasn't got a clue about half of what went on. She's probably never even stepped foot into Northern Ireland. Now, I personally, I have worked in Northern Ireland. I wasn't there long. I wasn't there long as some of the people I know, such as my father and some of the people that have joined us in this group now. Uh, like, my dad was uh, a dunny stints in Northern Ireland by the time I was born, uh, but like I say, I know many veterans. I, I just feel very disappointed in BBC. Uh, I find it sickening that they don't do the research properly. They don't get people on the show when they're talking uh, politics and debating things. You know, they don't get people with the know 
on the show. Like, they did speak to Richard Danner, and they did have a veteran there from Justice for Northern Ireland. But they didn't get opportunity to speak properly. Uh, the sad thing is, it's not just BBC, though, David, David Formbury. It, it's not just BBC. Uh, a lot of our media, the press, for example, a lot of them, they never give it. They never play it fair. Like these these Republican scumbags, terrorists. It's not just about IRA. One of the one of the things the Justice for Northern Ireland veteran mentioned, early release. They were talking about the Good Friday Agreement. Tony Blair stabbing armed forces, our armed forces in the back, and the families. Right. Uh, the thing is, it's not played fair. Tony Blair did this deal with with the Republicans, and basically a lot of it were kept kept hush hush. It was brushed under the carpet. They didn't let the British public know. I'm British and I'm proud. I've lived here the vast majority of my life. I was born on. I might have been born in Canada, but I was born under a union flag and I'm very proud of that but this the problem with it the reason why I'm speaking now is I really find it difficult uh, to take on board what what what's been said the other thing is they had the woman on who mentioned about having Nelson's column pulled down they also mentioned other like statues what we have in the country they mentioned like Oliver Cromwell now, I, I was raised a Catholic. I was an altar boy, for Christ's sake. As a boy, as a young boy, I was an altar boy. Now, I don't find Oliver Cromwell offensive. I don't find things like that offensive. So why should anyone else? You know, they're, they're trying to say that uh, Admiral, the great Admiral Horatio Nelson... You know, his statue, they're trying to say he was a white supremacist. I've never heard so much shite in all my life, right? He, he sta if you look at his statue, he's an, he's an arm missing. He was also blinded in one eye. You know, he was there doing a job, probably what, uh, back then, I don't know about politicians, but, you know, probably... Kings and que queens probably sent sailors to war and troops to war. You know, I, I, regardless, anyway, regardless, I think it's absolute crazy. And these politicians, are, and they had a woman there who were like of Afri African or origin. And another, you know, and they're saying, well, we're British. Well, act like you're bloody British. You know, we're, we're a proud race of people. The British people, you know, I'm not going to be called a bloody racist for, sp for speaking the truth. We're a proud breed of people, you know, and yet these people are trying to tarnish us, uh, going on about the slave trade and what have you. Britain was one of the first nations to abolish the slave trade. We was one of the, the very, f I think we was the first to abolish it. You know what I mean? It's utter BBC that they're forever uh, coming out with this sh shit. Just utter shit. I can't believe the crap they come out with half the time. Uh, I find it very disappointed. And, and I, I, I will not pay. I will not pay a TV licence. I, I tell you now. I, re I totally refuse because if anything... The anti-British of the BBC. They shouldn't be called the British Broadcasting Corporation because at the end of the day, if you look at the, the amount of news readers, you look at these shows, they have current affairs, that's the word I was thinking of before. You look at the people they have on these shows, if anything, the anti-British, look at the treatment they give to Nigel Farage when he's been on Question Time. Or some, I know a lot of people don't like him, but look at Nick Griffin, for example. Like, you know, 
love him, love him or love him. But at the end of the day, at times, he does speak a lot of sense. Katie Hopkins, she's another one. Love her, love her or love her, she does at times speak a lot of sense. You know, Katie Hopkins has actually gone out when it were Al Blackman, pre-Marine A. Katie Hopkins was one of the women that went and joined the people there outside the High Court in London. She was one of the people that went and joined the troops and the veterans outside the High Court. I've seen, I've seen the photographs. I actually know people that, that posted and had photographs took with Katie Hopkins. You know, but BBC, I, I, they're, they're just anti, they're just anti everything. The media in general is anti everything. Now I'm going to sound like Donald Trump, but there's a lot of fake news out there, right? There's genuine things happening, like people getting attacked. I was attacked last Monday, believe it or not. Yeah, I was only attacked by a group of group of kids, but I was still attacked. I still had, uh, I was still come at by young thugs with sticks and stones in right outside my own house. I was still come at with by a group of young kids throwing sticks and sto stones, trying to hit, beat me up with a stick outside my, the front of where I live. You know, yeah, the police was notified about it, but simple fact is I'm not having them kids trying to make an allegation that I've tried doing something or whatever. I'm not going to have a group of kids making up bullshit about me, especially when he was trying to threaten me with with uh, parents. If there's any repercussions of that, at least then the police have a record of what's gone on. Uh, but what really upset me, what really ang it, it, it did annoy me, it didn't upset me like to tears or anything like that, but what really upset me is being spat at. It's utter disgusting being spat at. I'd sooner be punched than be spat at. Right, but these kids, I collapsed last Thursday in the centre of Preston. And then the following Monday, I'm still not feeling very well. I get attacked by a group of kids outside my own, my own front door. Uh, and these kids live on this estate. I don't know them, but it's obviously, you know, they thought, oh, here we go. We'll throw some stones at him. We'll try to get a reaction off him. We'll try to get a chase off him. Uh, you know, we, we'll wind him up, we'll, we'll, we'll call him a few hurtful names. But it were more than just a few hurtful names because I was being called a junkie, a heroin addict, which I'm not, I've never, you know. And like I said to him, I said, you should be very ashamed of yourself. I'm an insulin-dependent diabetic with disabilities. Uh, you should be very ashamed, very ashamed of yourself. I said, it's disgusting what, what you've said to me. And all they could say is, you're a this, you're a that, you're the other. They were epic, four-letter words to me. C-U-N-T, uh, you're a fat bastard, so on and so on and so on. No respect. There's, there, and these are kids, you know, I hear a lot of things said about kids from abroad, from overseas, uh, kids that have come here as refugees, uh, gangs of kids from other countries, whatever, uh, going round mugging and acid attacks and this, that, the other. But hang on, these were kids that had been born and raised here in, in Britain. These were, were British children. In other words, these were kids from the same background as myself, you know, we, we have a lot of problems here now, and it doesn't help when BBC and the media, other channels, not just BBC, it's all the British media and press. They're all putting the focus on things that don't really matter. None of them are really getting out there and tell it, tell it, telling these stories. Uh, you know, there was an old lady attack last week in Chorley. Uh, very old lady, 
be black, a fa her whole face is like black because uh, of the bruising. Uh, the big, she was robbed. She basically was robbed in her own home. And I'm glad that local people have come together to help and support that lady. Uh, fixing her up with an alarm for a house and a bit of security. They like help buy food. Food. They probably robbed all the pension, but they helped buy food and so on and so on and so on. But this lady probably gets fa like five minutes compared to the likes of one of these terrorists or cowards in France or London or Manchester or anywhere else, basically, where terrorism's happened. You know, they probably get several days of news co coverage. Oh, this is Abdul. He's done... He's the terrorist behind the shooting in France or Belgium or this is Mohammed, he's the one behind the the stabbings or the running children over or running innocent bystanders over. You know what I mean? They probably get several days. The newspapers are probably several pages full full about them. And then they try to say this one really makes me angry but it also makes me laugh in a way in a cynical kind of way i think that's the right word oh but he come from a good background or oh, they go speak to neighbors oh yeah well he used to greet me in the morning why i was going to collect my newspaper or he used to speak to me why i was bringing the milk in and but you know utter bollocks like that hang on how can he be good he's committed an act of terror you know, he's killed people. He's maimed people. You know, unbelievable. And some of that were mentioned this morning about the Good Friday Agreement, about the IRA be, being given early release from prison in Ireland, the maze or whichever, you know, the H blocks, whatever they used to call them. But currently today, there has been jihadists released early there are jihadists walking around greater manchester there are jihadists and hate preachers walking around the streets of london bradford wherever you know birmingham birmingham another place you know these people right jihadists now they're not all asian from pakistan or afghanistan they're not all from places like that some of them was actually born here in the United Kingdom, yet they've committed these, I think they're acts of treason myself, yet they've been allowed to walk free. Yet there's veterans living on the streets. There's veterans going without, you know, there's people, not just veterans, many good, innocent people suffering in britain today so it is time that these matters are addressed by the press the media the government the home office you name it it's about time these issues are addressed and people stand up and say no more to hell with the bbc they can whistle for the TV licensing because I refuse, point blank, I'd sooner go to jail than pay for that poxy piece of shit bit of paper. I will not ever, ever, ever buy a television license. Anyway, I think I've said enough. I hope you understand what I've said and I hope that uh, people agree with what I've said as well. Thank you for joining me, and please share. Thank you, good, and have a good Sunday. Sunday, it's uh, not so far off lunch hour now, so I'm ready for brunch. Take care, everyone.